ladies and gentlemen. Today, my name is Michael Granger. Today we're going to talk about the CWV structural test plate in the 1GF. Um, by you achieving your CWVs, it opens up a lot of opportunities for you out in the industry. It allows you to be able to go and get jobs in structural steel shops that are CWV approved and to make welds that are then insured by the CWV group. Um, How many of you have tested in this with the CWV before? As being a CWV tested student, you will have to set up the machine, you have to set up your plates, you have to have the inspector stamp your plates. Um, there's no grinders allowed. We're going to talk about more stuff of this. We're going to talk about the safety requirements. We're going to talk about a lot of the stuff to go along with the CWV test. To kind of ease things into it, a little bit of a joke for you. Um, how are welders like prostitutes? You usually find them laying in awkward positions, uh, screaming for more rod and more money. The first time I ever had to do my CWV test, it was I just got out just out, got out of fab school. I was working for a shop in down on the coast. My dad knew the inspector. My dad's been a welder for 35 years. My dad knew the inspector. The inspector was a family friend. He showed up to do the testing and he set everybody else up to do their tests and you're allowed to weld on your paddle at your station or on your table, wherever it may be. I was doing my overhead test plate. I was doing all four positions. He tacked my flat plate on the floor and I had to weld my flat plate onto the floor. My horizontal plate was tacked about three inches off the ground and I had to lay on the ground and weld that plate out. And then my vertical vertical plate was tacked to the bottom of the table. I had to weld that out, and my overhead was tacked to the bottom of the table with the brace in my way, hitting my laying across my back because the inspector said that's how you're actually going to do the test, and he was trying to be funny was because he's being a friend of my dad's. Um, so first off, we're going to go through and we're going to do the set. We're going to talk about the CWB qualification test, and we're going to talk about the safety equipment that's required. You want to make sure that you have your leathers on because you will get burned throughout this. You have to make sure that you're wearing your safety glasses at all times. You have to make sure that you have your welding helmet set correctly. You want to make sure that you have good fitting gloves with no holes in them. You want to make sure that you have leather safety steel toed boots on. You want to ensure that uh, all your welding equipment is in good shape and good repair. When you get your plate, when you get your plate given to you, you're not allowed to use a grinder anymore. So the inspector is going to give it to you, tell you to prep it, tack it, bring it back to him for him to stamp it. So when you're taking it to prep it, you're going to use a grinder with a wire wheel on the end of it, and you wire wheel the mill scale off of the plate. You clean any rusted spots off the plates. You want to clean them up spotless so that you're ready to go. This is how the plate is divided when it is set up in your booth. The option we're going to speak about today is option one, the GF. So here's a display of, of your coupon. There's a discard piece, and then there's an inch and a half coupon that's going to be a root bend, and then there's another inch and a half coupon that's going to be a face bend specimen, specimen, and then there's going to be a root bend specimen on the end, and then the discard piece on the end. If we look down here, you can see in figure one, it shows that there's a 30 degree bevel because we're doing the 1GF. Uh, there's a 13 millimeter or a half inch gap allowed between the square edge and the beveled edge of your plate. Uh, the backing plate needs to be two inches in size. They supply all this stuff for you. It's nothing that you guys have to cut. It's all preset and supplied. Once you have your plate cleaned and tacked and ready to go, you're going to bring it over to the inspector. The inspector is going to put his stamp in it and then he's going to stamp it in a your welder number into it as well as he's going to stamp the position and the gf weld next step is to have your stop starts laid out as you can see this is a different plate from a different slide that i'm using um, so you have your stop starts laid out my suggestion is, is you put a piece of soapstone on there because you don't want to blow past your stop start you want to stop exactly on the stop start at the inch and a half mark is where he has said to stop. 
The other thing I do is I center punch the bottom of the, into the bottom of the valley. And I center punch that in here. Right down in here, you can see the little center punch right there. And then there'll be another one back in here on the square edge. I do that so that when you're welding across, you can see the center punch mark. Okay, and all fail safe, you have your soapstone there to stop you. Because if you weld past it, the plate is a rejection. If you stop before it, the plate is a rejection. You have to be right on your stop start. There I've completed the one well, I've completed my fillet weld on my square edge side and I've stopped at my stop start. Again, your fillet weld cannot exceed 5 sixteenths in size, in fillet size. Uh, there's some rules and regulations when you have when you're doing this. Uh, all materials, including the electrodes and the coupons, must be supplied by the test center. The electrode size is 7018 E7018 one eighth or larger diameter electrode. One eighth is the easiest to control for you guys starting out, just getting used to doing these. Do them with one eighth electrodes. Uh, there's no files, saw blades, or methods of removing deposited metal to alter the weld bead or shape are permitted. Period. If you get caught with a grinder in your booth or a saw blade or a cold chisel or anything like that, it's an automatic fail and you've thrown away your money that you invested to try to get better your career. Uh, effective January 5th of 2004, welders were allowed to choose, have the choice of whether their coupons are to be cut out and bent or you can have them x-rayed. CWB will, will provide requested x-rays. X-rays plates normally are available X-rays, plates, results are normally available within a week of the test date. If you have your plates cut and bent on site, the inspector is able to evaluate them right in that moment and then tell you whether you passed or failed and then you can move on for your career. Um, the tests are consistent, comprised of the flat, horizontal, vertical and overhead. Um, we'll, we've talked about that a little bit in the previous lessons that we've done. We'll continue on as we go. Uh, all coupons must have a backing strip as the drawing that we see in previous. You only have three quarters of an hour, so you have 45 minutes to complete the whole test plate. That sounds like a lot of time, but it isn't by the time you have to wait for it to cool down. So you need to stay focused and stay on task. Uh, upon successful completion of the welding test, the uh, CWB inspector will come over and he inspects your stop starts, he inspects your fill passes, and he inspects your cap paths. Once he has signed you off on your visual inspections, you are then allowed to move forward. Okay, so this was my first root well, my first square edge side fillet weld. There's me completing it. This is me completing the beveled edge. You want to weave to tie the two welds together so that you don't end up with a valley in the bottom of the in the bottom of the backing plate. There's me continuing to fill. Once you've completed your stop starts once and the inspector's inspected them, you do not have to stop start again, okay? You can just continue to weld and weld and weld and weld. Make sure you use your runoff tab so that you can get out of the plates, okay? Um, here's me getting closer to my cap pass. I'm almost to the fill height that I'm required. There's me just starting to catch the edge. If you notice over here on the edge, you can see where I've just gone over the toe line, just gone over the, ed the toe line of the plate. You want to try to avoid this, but it's not the end of the world. I did this because it happens as you're doing it. We all have bad days. You have to remember that when you're doing your testing, it's okay to have a mistake. It's okay to have a failure. It's not the end of the world. It happens. Okay. Here's a down. Here's looking at the plate from the edge. It shows how I filled up to the top edge, and now we're going to continue to fill the rest of the plate in. Continue to weld. Continue to weld. Um, there's my cap completed. I'm nice and I'm not over my eighth of an inch because you're allowed one eighth of an inch as your maximum height and minimum is flush. There's an end view of it. You can see that I'm at least flush and a little bit positive, so that's exactly what we want. After I've passed my visual, so we'll just go back one slide here, guys. So after the inspector has passed this off. We're then gonna go and we're gonna gouge the backing plate off of the plates. Once we have gouged the backing plate off, you're then gonna cut your plates into inch and a half coupons. 
These ones are being stacked in the bandsaw. We stack three sets of plates together just to make it more efficient. After you've stacked, you're going to bend your plates and then the inspector's going to evaluate. As you can see, you bend two roots and one face bend, and that shows the quality of the weld. That is what we're trying to achieve. You want to have a flawless weld. Having a flaw is not the end of the world. There are allowances in the code to allow for what the flaws are allowed to be. And we're going to go over them right now. Um, so techniques in aiding and passing the CWB test, pack only on the, on the perimeters of the plate, no chipping hammer marks or stray arc marks on the plate. So I don't want to see you guys beating on the plate with your chipping hammer. You should not have to do that. That's a big no-no. You should just be able to rake the flux off and it should pop right off. You should not have to be beating on it. The other thing is, is no stray arc strikes on the plate. If you have stray arc strike on the plate, it's an automatic failure. Um, fill in the craters at the end of the weld with a full cross section of the groove. So you're allowed to fill in your plate flush before you get to your cap. Once you get to your cap, you cannot touch it again. It has to be full length stringers only. Okay. Um, do not build the weld up more than three, three millimeters or one eighth of an inch above your plates. And you're allowed no more than one thirty second of undercut. I would not risk having any undercut whatsoever, especially on a flat position plate. You're, it's very easy to fill in. You shouldn't have any problems with that. Uh, ensure that you're never weaving up against the square edge of the plate as uh, you always want to point the square edge of the plate to be welding on. Make sure that your stop starts are directed as the CWB inspector. Um, your stop start technique, make sure that you start in the weld, start in, start the arc ahead of the crater where you've stopped. Get the rod, get the arc established, get it heated up, come back into the weld, and then continue on. Uh, The leg length of your fillet must not vary more than 1 16th of an inch in size from one end of your plate to your other end of your plate. So you can't go from having a quarter inch fillet on one end to a, five, for, to a 1 8 fillet on the other end. That's classified as a failure and you failed your visual inspection before you even continued the test. So you're going to throw that plate away, you're going to pay the inspector another $150 and he's going to issue another set of plates and you're going to start over again. Um, so now. The, the variations, uh, most common types of failure are lack of fusion at the root of the fillet weld side. That's the most common type of failure. Um, causes are insufficient heat, poor manipulation or technique, an incorrect electrode angle, incomplete fusion or slag uh, inclusion as a restart is, most, is another common thing. You don't let your arc reestablish well enough before you come back and then you let the puddle get in front of your weld, like we've talked about while you guys are going through all of your practicals that you have been. Um, one of the biggest problems that happens when you're doing your CWB, when you're doing your CWB tests, is people will long arc. The reason for long, long arcing, what it does is it causes your voltage to spike, your voltage rises, your amperage drops, everybody thinks it makes it easier to weld like that because you have a cooler arc. The problem is, is you're now throwing material across the weld and onto the plate and it's not really bonding into the metal. So long arcing can cause lots of problems too. Uh, your limit of your flaw is like I was saying, when you vent your plates and say you do have some porosity clusters, Okay, there's rules and built into the code for what they're allowed to fail you on, what they're allowed to pass you on. Okay, uh, the limits of flaws, so porosity or fusion uh, defects such as slag, lack of fusion, inadequate penetration, the maximum deviation of a single flaw is not to exceed 2.6 millimeters. Okay. Flaws of two millimeters to 2.6 millimeters are evaluated based on how close they are together. For example, if there's one two millimeter slag inclusion, 15 millimeters away from another two millimeter slag inclusion, the result is a fail. They must be uh, separated by 20 millimeters of clear material. Example number two, there's a two millimeter pore that is separated from a 2.6 millimeter long slag inclusion by 20 millimeters. The result is failed because they must be separated by 26 millimeters of clear material. Example number three. A two millimeter long lack of fusion is separated by two millimeter pore uh, 
uh, diameter pore by 30 millimeters. So the result is a pass, as they are separated by 26 millimeters. If you have clusters of porosity or pieces of slag smaller than two millimeters in size, and if their sizes add up to more than nine millimeters and need 25 millimeters of a weld, that results as well as in a fail. Okay? So it's not the end of the world if you do have something in there. The inspector doesn't always fail you. He has a code that he has to work by. He has to measure them, magnify them, check them. Okay? So it's not the end of the world. You want to try to have a clean pass. Ideally, that's what we're all hoping for but it isn't the end of the world. Remember, we all started somewhere, and that's the biggest thing I wanna get across to you guys is that we had to start somewhere. Um, so after this, we're gonna head upstairs and we're gonna practice for this. We're gonna try one. I'm gonna issue you guys some plates. You guys are gonna go and buff them. You're gonna buff them all up, tack them together. You're going to bring them back to me, I'm going to lay them out, I'm going to stamp them for you, then you're going to go weld them and we're going to practice this as a complete procedure, okay? Does anybody have any questions? Okay? Um, after you've completed the weld, after I've signed off on the inspection of the weld, we're going to then go, we're then going to, go to the visual inspection. I will visually inspect the coupons once the coupons are, have received a pass. I will then send you out to gouge the backing plate off. Once you gouge the backing plate off, we're gonna grind them up and then we're gonna cut them. We're gonna polish them all up, get them ready to bend and we'll bend them in the test jig. Once they're bent in the test jig, we will then evaluate them and you guys will have practiced your first CWV. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Okay, let's go upstairs and set up. Thank you for your time.